share my stream. Good evening, afternoon, actually. Welcome to episode 303. And tonight we're going to feature Marco. He's going to speak on behalf of uh, Guru Slavin. For those you don't know, he unfortunately just recently passed, um, which is sad. And uh, we're also going to be talking about the seminar that's coming Sunday to raise uh, money for the family. And we'll be talking about that and showing the flyer for that. So without further ado, I'm going to be bringing uh, Guru uh, Marco up. And we're here to speak on Guru Slavin and everything else as far as the seminar and, and that goes. So here he is. Hi, guys. Hi, Dean. Hey there. How you doing? Yeah, great, great. So hopefully, you know, fortunately, I'd rather be talking to you under different circumstances, but at least um, you want to get out there, get the word out about him, speak on his behalf and his legacy in the seminar. Yeah. So. You know, respect to you for that. And um, so how did you, um, you know, so how did you guys, how and when did you guys meet? Uh, uh, so the weird thing is uh, I, I started doing FMA like uh, like in the early um, uh, 2011, 2012. Uh, mm -hmm. And I didn't know, I didn't know about him. Like he was literally mm -hmm. 100 kilometers away from the city where I live. And uh, one of my friends from a different country, he's like, why don't you connect with Slavin? I'm like, who's Slavin? Like, who, who is this? And then I Googled them. I saw, like, uh, the resume. And it was around 2016 that we met online. Mm -hmm. And from the get-go, like, uh, we like, clicked immediately. He's, uh, we had the same uh, thought process of, obviously, Slavin, is, Slavin was... Um, Older than me, he's like uh, a small version, uh, of, at least uh, in these parts, uh, like uh, a small version of Dan Santos. Such a wealth of knowledge, like from different mm. martial arts and how he incorporated that into one. And yeah, and so then I, I, I went to him. He came uh, to Split, hosted a, a, a few seminars. And bit by bit, uh, we got to know each other. Our families got to know each other. And yeah, we became very quickly, we became like, really really uh good friends yeah so 2016 so when you when you guys know if i'm just because i know his background is pretty extensive if i'm not mistaken jkd and asano blend initially and yeah okay yeah so yeah. He, so he had to be flying over to the states then it sounds yeah. like yeah uh, I, I i i don't know exactly when but i know he traveled a bunch of times and uh, he lived uh, one period in America when he fought um, uh, again uh, apart from like Filipino martial arts which he started in the Santa Academy uh, he taught Muay Thai at uh, King's MMA which is like uh, that's uh, uh, the most like that's one of the baddest gyms that that, that produce like guys like uh, Rafael Cordero's gym that produce guys like <laughs> Van Der Ley, Shogun Hua everything and uh, uh, he's a uh, he trained uh, with a Brazilian, like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and uh, fought MMA professionally. Uh, so he was on and off from, uh, the, he was in Los Angeles. And, like, he moved around and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he lived in America where he, like, owned his art, especially oh, FMA. Wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. I wasn't aware of that, that he actually moved there. And lived there for a while. That makes yeah. sense. Okay. Yeah, not just uh, not just in like uh, America. He went to be, uh, before during the nineties after the war. He went to uh, Hong Kong to study like with the. Now I'm gonna butcher this because I don't know about like Wing Chun history, but his first mm -hmm. art was one of his first arts was pure Wing Chun, and it was that uh, Law Shui, like the the some one of those badass dudes that fought on the on the rooftops or whatever the the street yeah. kind of fighter. And uh, there he started like his Wing Chun journey in, in, in Hong Kong. And then oh. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and everything. And uh, I think it was uh, uh, two, 2004 something he started like uh, the Inesanto blend and he got exposed to FMA. Like at the yeah, Inesanto. Through, yeah. yeah. At the academy, right, sure. And then, um, wow, I, yeah, that's interesting. Like he actually, I didn't, I didn't realize he, in addition, living in America, went to Hong Kong to. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, if you come to his gym, to to it's still operating now. 
uh like there's uh you know a cla it looks like a classical mma gym but like in the corner mm -hmm. you have uh what do you call those mug junk dummies the the wood yeah, yeah yeah the dummies yeah 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 he has like the dummy he has like a, a, a bunch of sticks uh or chinese weaponry fma weapon like it's yeah. it's a whole yeah yeah, because yeah, right, Wing Chun has the, if I'm not mistaken, butterfly the, sword, yeah. the butterfly sword. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, big yeah. pole. Yeah. 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 So, wow. So then, all right. So this whole time, so then 2016, you guys, you meet online. Yeah. When did you guys actually went, so you had for seminars and then it sounds like you kind of became a student of this. Did you go to this place regularly or? I would like to go when uh, when when I could, uh, but it was like the weird thing is uh, he would come to split often with his wife and children, and uh, whenever he would come, uh, like it would be summer, so like where I live is very famous for tourism, and mm. he would be like uh, <laughs> he would leave his wife shopping and said, uh, "You want to train for two hours?" I'm like, "Sure, sure," and we would yeah. do like uh, uh, when I first met him, the first seminar he did, he did uh, like. Uh, uh, a mixture of FMA, but one of the things I really liked that he was showing was like dirty boxing and not panantukan, uh, but like uh, a mixture of uh, elbow destruction, but also mm -hmm. like a mixture because he trained with a lot of like he trained with Randy Couture. So a lot of the uh, dirty boxing when you grab him by the head, mm -hmm. call it uh, stuff like that. It was like like you could ask him anything like literally like what if i'm here what if i'm here what if he has this and then he would like oh, well uh, maybe you can do this maybe you can do this maybe your body type is better for this maybe it's better mm. for that. and not just like uh, he was uh, like in everything like uh, the, the latest i would like bug him about jujitsu because i've, I've like I've, i took a deep dive into brazilian jujitsu and like i would call him and i'll like ask him uh, what if i'm have this and he would literally like uh, we would be walking down the street he would sit on the ground and say like uh you can do this you can do this like <laughs> in the middle of the in the yeah. middle of the park or anything like he was he was such a, a martial arts philanthropist like uh, uh, just a knowledge of, of, of fighting arts and practical fighting arts he was not into yeah. he had a big disdain for uh petty kicking and uh, you know the yeah what's getting lost in translation and stuff like that i tell you randy here's the thing about randy and i and i can appreciate know this because what burton would tell me burton did some extensive tra training with randy and he said it was just amazing so i could just see some of that clinch work the dirty yeah. box thing i mean yeah and there i mean randy randy made a career out of that you know yeah, yeah. and it's safe and it was yeah. safe uh, like uh, for your body it wasn't too risky <laughs> yeah 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 jeez so then you guys finally meet so then you know when you're starting to train with him you kind of mentioned already so what what really for the folks who maybe don't know about him what what really stood out like far as his methodology and his approach uh, sports specific training for uh, generally uh, arts that are not known to be sport so mm -hmm. Um, for example, uh, uh, I'll, I'll use FMA as an example, and he would be like, okay, we're going to isolate one strike, and uh, you're going to put on a mask, you're going to put on a glove, isolate that, let's work that. Um, we're going to put weapons on the ground, uh, turn our backs, uh, as we turn, we grab the first weapon, we go. So it was a very attribute-based, uh, mm. uh, he had a very, like, he could make a drill from anything. Like literally, he could make a drill from anything. Uh, he would see something, isolate that. Now we'll make four variations of that and uh, just drill it. But with a very like a sport specific approach, meaning that you're developing fighting attributes more than you're learning um, a dead pattern. Like you, yeah, if it that makes sense to you, I don't. I, oh no, it totally makes sense to me. As opposed to getting so deep into memorization, where you're going to exhaust the memory and all that, whereas actually development, it's infinite. You can always work on speed, timing, range, power, accuracy. So yeah. I totally get what you're saying. I, I mean, it sounds like it was a fantastic approach yeah. that he was yeah. uh, giving you guys. Um, so he had his, so it's not he had his own school the whole bit and yes. Yeah, yeah, it's still, it's, uh, they ended up in the news, like, uh, the school started from Monday, it opened again, his, one of his black belts, uh, mm -hmm. uh, one of his black belts, Doma Soldo, is, uh, gonna be heading the school, it's gonna be MMA and, uh, BJJ, because Slaven school was most famous for 
basically MMA and BJJ. So uh, he had oh, a bunch of MMA. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, BJJ and MMA because uh, a couple of Slavic students are like uh, European champions in which is like well, he comes from a very very small town. You, you most of his hometown is super super small, and the, like he he made not just champions in in uh, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. One of his uh, students uh, was is a, a world champion in Muay Thai. Uh, mm -hmm. One of his uh, other students is uh, was like a gire boy, like the kettlebell stuff. So like the other student is now coming up in boxing. He would uh, he would he had this like the best thing I think about him is that he would if he didn't know something he would send you in the re direction and said go learn and come back. Like mm -hmm. I remember I remember it clearly. I was supposed to go to a Balintabak seminar. And I was like, uh, it wasn't a good time for me because of the money. It was end of the month. And he says, no, 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 no. I'll pay for your seminar. Just go uh, and bring that knowledge. And then you'll show me what you learned. Literally, he was, and he would do that like uh, uh, some jujitsu guys. He can't make it. He would send the students, go, go to the seminar. Go, go learn from different people and then come back to the gym and like teach us all what you learned. Like he was that type of guy. He was never the type of guy that would like hide his students. With Slaven is like uh, go there, go there. You you want to train boxing? Here's a great boxing coach. But then come back to us and show us what he yeah, taught. Bring back to the nest. Yeah, I mean that's what we're doing. I think students appreciate that when they see the teacher really advocate them to go elsewhere and train, and you know when they put their journey first as opposed to theirs. I, I think I think students appreciate that. You know. Yeah, yeah definitely. Like uh, for his funeral, there was like uh, ninety of his students. Like uh, it was he the, the the funeral was beautiful. They had uh, because he was a war hero. Uh, they had like uh, I don't know uh, when when the firing squad fires. I don't know how you call it. Like the the the, the military. Yeah, yeah, uh, and everything. And there was a like uh, police had to be there because there was so much people. Like he touched a lot of lives, not just mm -hmm. like uh, his students, but a lot of guys that came through the through his academy. It was a uh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful to see everyone, but his students loved him because uh, Slaven was always open. There were no, no secrets with him. Uh, like if you train hard and he saw that, he would like dedicate, dedicate his time. Like uh, he never charged me a penny. Like the, 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 that's what people understand. Like I've trained a bunch of times with him. Uh, I helped him during seven. Never once did he ask me for like, and, and I wanted to pay. And he's like, no, 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 no. And oh, like, wow. was, yeah, like uh, Slaven was a, truly a martial artist. He wasn't a martial art uh, businessman or like mm. a lot of people in martial arts that are just in you know, it for the money. He was truly in it for the for the art, art and plural. Yeah, wow, 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 wow. So, so we get with him. Um, so when you guys train though, with regards to um, FMA, like yeah. did he give you was his focus on the blend or stuff that he maybe extrapolated from the blend, put his own twist on it? Or so when when I met him, he was really into uh, not really into, but he started getting into Pekiti Tertia. So uh, we did uh, in Santos stuff. Like a lot of the knife stuff we we did from the uh, like we would drill in Osanto. I was already then like uh, into the more uh, uh, preemptive uh, knife systems out there. So uh, and he would tell me like this is uh, this is this is all from like you know Santo blend is just uh, it's not it's offensive and not defensive. So mm -hmm. but it's the same biomechanics and everything. And so we worked that. And then he started like uh, getting into Pekiti uh, Pekiti uh, Tertia. And we would do like uh, also stick, but a lot of nice stuff. And mm -hmm. when he went to the Philippines and met Guru Arnold, this is, I remember that, like he went there for like two and something weeks. And he came back and literally came to split like two days after. And uh, he was showing me and this, um, our other mutual friend, Yasmin, also a Jiu Jitsu black belt from Sarajevo, he was showing us the basis of Kali Sulistrisim. And, and I remember that when he came, he was like speaking with such passion. I'm like, this is it. This is it. I yeah, finally yeah. found. I <laughs> finally found. Because he always had an issue. We would talk about this. Uh, he always said like, I always had a big issue because he said, when I, when I fight, um, obviously this is mirrored. I, I look like a southpaw. But like if I, when I fight, I fight with a very MMA-ish fighting stance. And he said mm -hmm. like, it would drive me crazy when I'd need to put uh, the back leg and twisting pieces because I don't do it empty-handedly. 
Like if I need to change my whole game to fight with the weapon, it, it, it always hurt him. And he said like, because Illustrissimo is very front forward, you're standing mm. almost like, you're already standing like in a basically fighting, modern Western fighting stance. Yeah. Uh, it's just that you're more upright. But if you like lower yourself, that would be a modern like MMA style of stance. And he said like, this is it. This is, and the Carlos Hermanos. Uh, influence also, which was also very MMA in its approach that like attribute development is much more important than learning uh, 45 uh, Sombrano. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Very and, uh, yeah, yeah. And he brought that conditioning. So mm -hmm. I made a tire dummy, I made a tired stack, and it was like hit for power, use basic strikes, and just mm -hmm. fuck them up. Your, you know, strength and use like Cali Silistrissimo footwork. To keep yourself out of range but when you get into that range hit him that so that every strike is that you break something that it's yeah. not like petty cake not from the wrist like everything should be yeah right so wow yeah. so when, in ptk what um was he pre tri the formula like 64 ways of attack like, uh... i don't know uh because he's he started getting into through the romel romer tortals side of uh Bekiri Tersha, and like some of the stuff, like some of the knock drills he liked, but uh, again, I, I can't speak now on his behalf because I don't know, but I, I remember him always saying like the footwork fucks with me. Like I, I, I'm never gonna, in a fight, I'm never gonna uh, stand like this. I'm never gonna move with the, the you know, the weight on the- That's what you mean. That's why I kind of, and I have nothing against P PTK. Everything has something yeah, offered. I'm not gonna try, like, I'm not saying, I'm like, we, because we had the same, uh, I even I even had problems later on because I, I would over exaggerate the movement. And when I started relearning how to stick fight, I had a big problem of trying to kick out some of the stuff that my that I picked up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always said like we, he always had that mentality that he said like most of your fights are gonna start empty handed. So you will start like it's never gonna be a, re a reciprocal duel where we're both starting mm -hmm. with weapons. So. Yeah. You will always have to transition from your empty hands, and uh, you cannot have that mentality in a fight. Ah, I'm boxing now. I'm grappling. Oh, now I have to change my whole fighting stance because I drew a knot. Like that. That's not how uh, you know how a how a fight goes. Um, and especially when in the adrenal state, your brain does not process like oh, uh, now I got to. It's becoming overloaded. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So no no wow I, I that's great stuff I was just I, I didn't realize he dabbled in PTK and under yeah. Romel um, yeah you know so I mean that's interesting and then so so he went you know when he went um did he give you like uh so in the as far as pre I guess I'm speaking in terms of pre KI as far as the FMA training you yeah. and him did you guys yeah. just focus on all weapons or or what was your guys' focus? Mostly not, most because mm -hmm. I because I wanted to train uh, not, uh, mm -hmm. but he got me into um, uh, actually uh, uh, like full contact fighting, like mm -hmm. helmets, the yeah. sticks, and uh, everything goes. Mm -hmm. So and he got me into jujitsu because uh, this was two thousand, I think it was seventeen or something. I always had this mindset because I trained some grappling. I always said this mindset, ah, oh, uh, you'll have to take me down. It's not so easy. Boom, 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 until I fought him and our mutual friend, yeah. and literally, like, root block, clinch, uh, get yeah, under the root block, take him down. Yeah, take <laughs> yeah. down, and I will get smashed. And I'm like, this is not going to happen ever. If, yeah, I, if fun, someone's going to smash, it's going to be, be me from top, me taking people down. And um, yeah, this is like, uh, yeah, he got me into jujitsu. Like, he was one of the guys that I was like, I have to learn this shit. This is ridiculous. Like, this yeah. is ridiculous. Like, I'm yeah, keeping to, my yeah. dive into it. I mean, like, I don't, I don't go as, I'm not going as deep as obviously you or all that, but man, you bet, you better at least have positional maintenance. Like, if you get mounted, like, to know what to do and i mean and, and you know, standing clinches is, is like super super important like yeah. super important uh uh i remember i remember we had a sparring there's a video of it uh so uh, uh, uh he hit me so hard here that uh, literally everything started like uh, numbing through my spine because slaven was a big guy slaven yeah. was like uh like 
100 kg, which is like, I don't know, 220, but like he would vary, but he was a big guy. You saw like, uh, I'm, 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 I'm oh, like, yeah, he's, feet, right? I mean, yeah, he's yeah, yeah. and I remember like I lost my weapon. I look at him and the, there was a wall behind him and I go for a single leg. I grab a single leg. I start like trying to lift him up to, to like um, push the, walk the pipe basically. To, yeah, to throw yeah. him up. I remember this because like it, it ruptured my ear. Um, he created a little space, elbowed me. Uh, I was wearing a helmet, a fencing mask. Uh, the the material and the, the metal lining, it ruptured my ear. Second elbow and then basically uh, a, a modified tie clinch, kneed me in the head. I, I, I was already falling down. The other guy was like, wait, 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 wait. And he, he went for a soccer kick but stopped. And uh, right there, it was like, he says, like, uh, uh, you need to have a standing flinch. Like, you need to know how to control a person. If you can't control a yeah. person, if you think you're just, you'll just uh, hubud lubud or you'll just take them down against someone that knows how to fight at all ranges, like, the standing clinch is one of the most important things. That, that was, yeah. yeah. I mean, right. I mean, it's like, like, assuming if you don't have a knockout punch or that, that at some point, you're going to end up there. Yep. And if you don't know how to navigate those waters or you don't train in it. Man. It's, it's like, for, uh, not to, not to go off chart, but like, it's super hard to keep distance. It's super easy to close distance. It's not mm -hmm. like we, we've seen it uh, on CCTV footage uh, a thousand times. People will just rush in forward. They'll take a punch and they'll, the problem is that a lot of them don't know how to grapple, but they'll grab clothing and then they'll start mm -hmm. pulling. And you're in grappling range. There's no such thing as court or range. Yeah. When people can grab you, they will grab you. Yeah. They, it's a, it's a, we are by nature grapplers. It's an animalistic not, reaction. It's, an animal, it's our nature. You're, you're absolutely right. It's an animalistic biological response. You're just yeah. going to, yeah. yeah. And uh, if 90, per, because I, 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 I train jujitsu, like uh, it's become a big part of my life, but like I'll, I'll even tell jujitsu guys. 90% uh, of fights don't end up on the ground. They end up in the clinch, and after that, someone falls to the ground. But yeah. if you know how to clinch and you know how to rest, stand up wrestle, I'm not talking like American style or freestyle yeah. wrestling, I'm talking yeah. like a combative clinch. So it's grappling, combat grappling. It's like you will not go to the ground. You will dictate where the fight happens. And mm -hmm. uh, if you have a mastery of that, so like what like uh, throwing elbows, uh, what Randy Couture basically did. Yeah, the, uh, it's very material. Pinning against walls and stuff. And this is what, again, uh, led to uh, Slavin's evolution of bus. Like he started using walls because it was um, uh, uh, what he did in the cage. Like I'll get mm. you to the cage, dirty boxing, I'll get you down, and then I either smash you or I submit you. And it was mm. that philosophy is like why not use obstacles like what to control someone to to um uh, to uh, control their speed because when you use one surface now they can be so explosive uh like they're on the open where they can move w in whatever direction yeah, they're in. right if you can control their movement and yeah 100 percent. i mean geez so um i got we just got a question here just uh, so just so i don't forget it it's from stefan uh, can you tell something about Slavin's Carlos Romano's journey. Uh, I think the best you uh, you ask Bastien and Sixto. Uh, but uh, obviously, uh, it's a good one since Slavin trained with them in the Philippines and he brought us, he brought them. Uh, Arnold, I think, right? I mean, Arnold, yeah, yeah. He brought Arnold once here to split and then he brought him again uh, with the, with the brothers. Brother. Yeah, yeah, so it was Arnold was 2018. And Arnold and the Carlos Hermanos brothers were 2019. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so he so he goes over there. Um, he gets exposed to KI. He comes back to you. Um, yeah. So how did that transition go? Did he just immediately kind of adapt that make his mo his model for FMA? Yeah. Yeah. Like the stuff that Coach Arnold did. Like uh, like for for example, Slaven taught me the super importance of hand and leg sparring. And uh, like Coach Arnold showed me like tricks for long range fighting and stuff like that. But it was it was Slavin that was always like, listen, I know we love to put like the fencing mask on and do like the 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 more like dog brother style. But mm -hmm. like like think if you don't have a helmet, would you be charging in like that? And I'm Not like this guy. 
<laughs> yeah. And he said, like, focus on long range fighting. And I remember that, like, uh, he said, like, hand and leg sparring is the gem of Kali Silvestris. Those were actually his words. He says, this is the gem of, 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 of Kali Silvestris because it focuses on simplicity. But uh, you, you, you can hone that shit for 15 years and, you know, oh still God. find Long range. Oh, yeah. yeah. Refining it. It's endless. Yeah. It's infinite. It's because uh, like people, people always like say, uh, ah, oh, but long range is like, like, like if anyone sparred with Arnold and I, and I'd, I had the privilege of sparring with Arnold, mm -hmm. it's like, it's ridiculous. People do not understand like uh, the, because when you see, um, again, he's Filipino, so he's not very tall, but compared mm -hmm. to us, Croatians are very, very tall. And mm -hmm. uh, like it was, people were laughing. I remember like guys that were uh, six, five, were like, ha ha ha. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna hit him. He's not gonna hit me. And he kept mm. hitting these giants with one mm. strike, with right. one one strike, and just laughing. Oh, hey, 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 pat, pat, hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you'd be like, and I'll be watching it. And Slam is like, he's just throwing one strike, and he's hitting us all, and we can't hit him back. And so to me, like him and and I don't know, like that opened my mind. Like, yeah, yeah. If we're not fighting with helmets, I wouldn't be so because uh, I like, you know swing hard like a motherfucker try to you know the mm -hmm. the whole adrenaline shit and everything that that's cool but uh once you're standing across another man that's willing to cave your head in with the with a blunt instrument it's not like uh, you know yeah yeah i'll uh you know i'll risk it so we'll see what happens it's it's yeah yeah yeah, yeah no 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 100 uh no argument there well put yeah you're not gonna be like yeah, I'll, I'll just crash in. <laughs> yeah, like if, especially if you have a weapon. Like I, I get like if we're in an elevator and you mm. go go to swing with a with a baseball bat, I'll 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 cover my head and I'll rush you. That, that yeah, the lack of space and yeah. sure. Yeah. But if we're like an open field and I have to like run to close that distance, uh, buddy, mm. you've never been hit in the head if you think that you're just gonna no, run. No, yeah, it doesn't feel good, man. It's yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> Yeah. It's not good for the uh, brain cells and the IQ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so what? Um, so then, is is it safe to say that then you were training Ki under him or trying to get some of the yes. material? Like, definitely. Like uh, mm -hmm. he would like. Uh, uh, so Arnold was also Arnold is very open. So uh, when Arnold was here, he would literally say, "Grab your phone and record. Record whatever you want." So uh, like, I remember specific drills I drilled uh, with Slaven. So we did the Defondo drill whenever we trained together. We did that shit like, like, poof. Uh, uh, the um, uh, the Kiro style of uh, uh, empty hand versus knife for like medium range when you can grapple when it's still. We did that. I, that enhanced sparring for for us at least was like he would say like this is the gem like this is the matrix and inside this matrix we can get entries into grappling but this mm -hmm. style of moving uh, uh like everything's fire like pop, 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 quickly yeah. reacting that was like for the medium range close range we would say like uh yeah grappling is all obviously king but at that distance when you're not so we would do that Cali Silistrissimo Kiro knife drill I don't know what mm -hmm. the name is but it was like um basically all angles and then when you get good at it you start improvising and the different reactions uh what else uh and long range we did a lot of long range because uh, uh, this is just my opinion so that, that no one freaks out i do not believe unless we're fighting with a sword i do not believe in uh, medium or close range techniques obviously we did a lot of uh, recta drills like so uh, oh, right, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. But like uh, generally, uh, the whole oh sorry, uh, generally sorry, uh, generally the whole mid range things we never we never did that a lot. Not because it was like uh, uh, it wasn't good or anything, but because uh, when we looked at it through the filter of uh, uh, obviously of uh, of a stick, um, the moment I can touch it, the moment I'm gonna grab. It. So it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it was for at least the, the, why I'm saying it's from my perspective because that's the thing I mostly train. People that mm. train boxing will, will like that maybe distance because the moment I can grab you, I'm going to put my two hands on you and I'll try, try to 
throw you to the ground or knee you, yeah. elbow you, headbutt you, and then get you to the ground. And this is why, like, because, again, I didn't train for um, dueling purposes. I trained my mindset for, like, fighting. So I'm not going to respect the space you think I would respect if we're, if we're fighting. And, yeah. Yeah, right. You know, the dueling sparring mentality. I mean, you know. I, I, don't get me wrong. Like, Slavin was a big proponent of dueling in, in FME. Like, he said, like, if you do not spar, there's, you can throw away 100 hours of drills, you can throw them away. Like, even in the Inner Santa, he was, in the, when he trained with Inner Santa, he said, like, I couldn't wait for sparring. The problem is, a lot of guys didn't want to spar the intensity he wanted to spar. Yeah. No, I've heard yeah. that academy. I'm surprised they even sparred. I heard they're, um, even in the academy, they weren't doing that much anymore. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, but like when, when he trained, he said like they would do light hand and hand sparring or just like uh, you know uh, um, light to the body. And mm. uh, he said like that there was an intensity because you have to understand like he would train with killers, uh, MMA clinch, getting punched, getting kicked, and now you have to like tone it down. Oh, like, right, like, when they're hand hunting or body. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, and you have to, like, be respectful so you can't swing. You know? So yeah. that was w one of the things. And also, like, when he went to the Philippines, to the um, uh, Carlos Hermanos brothers, you know, they spot him. Uh, they Like, there's video of it, uh, him mm -hmm. fighting stick, stick. And even then, like, he had that mindset. Like, I, I remember him saying, like, I'm going there to learn stick fighting. Because I mm -hmm. asked him, like, I saw some of his fights, and I'm like, why didn't you clinch? Whenever we fight, the moment you I, I step into that range where you can touch me with your arm, you clinch me. He said, I went there to learn how to stick fight. My goal wasn't to, he, because he said, like, I knew that I could roof block and throw everyone to yeah, the right. ground. Yeah, right. He knew he could do that. Okay. Yeah, he yeah. says, I'm a black belt. Like, I, I could choke them, ground them, pound them. I can do whatever. And he's a big dude. Mm -hmm. And he says, but, like, no, I wanted to be put in an uncomfortable position when I have to do something against people that spend their life just doing this. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and it was uh, it was like refreshing because uh, he never uh, he always found useful stuff and he never dismissed something because you know the the entirety of it didn't fit the 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 mm. grand scheme. like uh, literally like. Uh, like the last year, he, he's been saying to me, like, you see a lot of uh, stuff that we're doing. I did bits and parts of it at the, within a sun. He said, but I never saw the, the you know, the, the, the missing pieces. And now I'm mm -hmm. seeing it. And now he says, now I get the old man. Like he, he had like these hints and he would give his students these hints. And, and it was up to you to pursue the. <laughs> I hear that from everybody. He gives it to you. It's up to you what you want to do with it and all that. I, that's a common this, this, theme right here. Yeah, this is how we found. Like he, he found Calisimistrissimo because uh, when he asked uh, uh, Danny Nosanto, when I think when he done was in Rome and Slaven was there, he's like, uh, I wanted to pursue like, other FMA. Uh, and he said, like, you got to train with other Lars. And, uh, and, and like, uh, he only heard like great things about coach. And through Sixto and Baste, he came into contact with Daniel you know, so yeah, and he and he started to like. Then people talk a lot of shit about Dan Inosanto, but Dan Inosanto is a uh, uh, he's a martial arts encyclopedia. The, the problem oh, is, oh no, yeah. without a doubt. I mean, FMA would not be where it is today if it if yeah. if it weren't for him. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he deserves all the accolades. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, yeah, yeah. And he and Slavin always spoke of him like a like a like a Yoda. Of. Yes, I know everybody just has them in such high regard that underneath them. I've never heard, I've never had anybody speak that's under him like ill or, or negative. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, he, yeah, it's, it's that, yeah, that Yoda presence, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, but, uh, so then he, um, so just, you know, for folks who maybe jump in there, so his overall background, so, just for the folks that maybe didn't know, JKD. Yes. So he started originally. He started, I think, in karate when he was in the military, and uh, he he told the story a bunch of times when he was a kid. They would climb up to a uh, to the rooftop of a of a building. They put on boxing gloves and they would just box, and they would just like 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 uh, hit each other until <laughs> until the people would say, "I'm done." 
And uh, after that, he uh, his main he went to to China, and uh, Wen Chang was uh, uh, in the nineties his um, inspiration in training. And then he wanted to fight bare knuckle. Uh, I'm not bare knuckle, but no holds barred. And it was an MMA. Then it was no holds barred. And uh, you can Google Slaven YouTube him. You have his old matches. Like bro, these matches are so old. Slaven would go in a gi. Like he would enter, you say, like old school racy stuff. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think it around 2000, he started uh, training in Jiu Jitsu. Okay. He was one of the first black belts in the region of Balkan, so mm -hmm. the neighboring countries around Croatia. Uh, he saw the efficiency of uh, Jiu Jitsu, wrestling. And then uh, he started training at the, as he was preparing like for, 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 for fights and stuff like that. He started training at the Inosanto Academy because, again, uh, there was that whole Bruce Lee connection with Dan Inosanto. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he really liked JKD. I, I remember, uh, I, I, I know he held like JKD, like, he always said, like, if JKD evolved, it would look like MMA. But, like, as far as the practicality of JKD, he really liked the direct approach. Uh, mm. Yeah, and then uh, basically it was like jiu-jitsu and MMA. But like MMA, when there were no MMA schools, so you had to like learn wrestling, you had to learn jiu-jitsu. Right, right. you had to go to different sources. It just wasn't under one roof like it yeah. is now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, I think he was such a great uh, umbrella of knowledge is because like he wrestled in uh, – I don't remember where, but he told me like they trained, like his jiu-jitsu coach would take him to like um, colleges in Iowa, in Oklahoma. And he Iowa, would like, yeah. wrestling. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> which is basically like a mecca of, of wrestlers. Uh, serious wrestling, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember like, he told me like they were, I think they were in Iowa. And he said like, it's college wrestling. He says, and we come and um, he's a jiu-jitsu guy. And he said, okay, we're going to stand up grapple. And he says, we start stand grappling and they start like clubbing him. And he says, mm -hmm. like, fighting. He says, no, no, this is wrestling. He says, then why are you hitting? He says, no, no, this isn't hitting. And, the, <laughs> and, 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 and it's like, uh, he, this is why like his, a lot of his stop standing game is really mm -hmm. like grappling, like wrestling based mixed with Muay Thai, but like uh, huge amounts of pressure, like huge amounts of pressure, good body mechanics. He like, you, you you also saw the like in Bas, he uses his head a lot, mm. uh, like he crushes you against their wall, and that's all from that like mixed background. He trained with one of some of the best dudes, and like uh, a lot of people, especially here in Croatia, don't know about. It. Like I was one of them. Like when I googled them, I was like, "Holy shit!" This yeah, man. here you are in your backyard, and you're like, yeah. "Don't even." You know? Yeah, because he was uh, never like I basically. Uh, 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 for not forced him but like said to him like listen uh we are doing weapon-based grappling and i'm doing my thing and you're doing your thing and uh you you have such a grappling experience why not let's test this shit and we would meet and we would um uh, we would um uh, uh test different ideas stress test mm. and i was like we need to record this like we need to record this is good like people out there selling bullshit and I'm like, because he he's a Especially very in the thing against knife world. Yeah, yeah. And he was like a very humble person. He never wanted to like you know expose mm -hmm. himself. Like, and then I like, we need to put this out. We need to put this out. And then you know, he was like, finally, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. I, I, I'm I'm grateful that at least that's one of the things that will stay like recorded. Like, what did you have for permanent like? keepsake library so is that kind of what began the beginning and the collaboration of boss or yeah yeah it was it was like i was doing a lot of two-on-one stuff like russian Thai stuff and uh uh he was like uh saying like you need to do it like this blah 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 but then he was like how are you gonna get into that and then he started coming up like with with the with the it has different names. We call it the C block. Someone else calls it the butterfly grip and everything. And uh, bit by bit, we started like, okay, what if I change grips? Okay, mm -hmm. do, do, do. But everything we whatever we did, we did with live energy. 
It was we never you have uh, to like man. Set, 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 really like there's always like there has to be like, like what Matt Thornton says, like live energy. You have to be pulling, you need to feel someone's weight, someone's pressure move so that you can see what you can go. Because if we're both standing like in vacuum, uh everything can work and nothing can. But if we like moving and feeling and yeah. No, it's so true, and especially with ending it's not, I mean, like, you know, lives are at risk now. You, you know what I mean? And so if you're teaching that and you haven't fully tested it out and tell, you know, honestly, like, hey, look, this is what's coming out the best. We're not saying it's 100 percent, but this is going to give you the best chance to get home. And you haven't, you know, and fully tested out and you're passing on the students. You know, to me, that that gets into ethical issues you know what i mean yeah. with with knife you know yeah um, and especially like uh, uh especially like uh, there's video of slavin uh doing this with one of his black so uh it's not just my opinion it was his opinion like the shit that works train killers works on regular people mm. i, I want to train something for the average joe because people always say oh uh, a trained fighter is not going to attack you on the street no he's not but I'm treating him like a trained fighter. Yeah. So uh, it was the same thing. Like if a two-on-one works against a trained rapper, it will work on a normal job. 100%. Yeah. And different. they know what's coming or they know what you're going to do. Yeah. So for the yeah. average person, layman, who's going to be probably wide, telegraphic, It's I totally agree with you. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And also the, the whole pressure thing is like uh, if you – practice because because some people said like oh you need strength for this and he would say like absolutely you need to be strong yeah. strength and conditioning is one of the most important aspects of your self-defense uh, uh of your self-defense spectrum like yeah. you should be strong you should be healthy and mm -hmm. when you when you practice uh, uh, the same shit when wrestlers practice that clubbing when, when when they do that to another wrestler he moves slightly but when they do it to a non-trained person his head goes into the into the ground because yeah. again he's not used to that type of pressure and uh, same same thing you grab a russian tie when you grab it on a normal people like i know because people would test me like oh let's see you uh they, let me see how how you can get me to the ground i literally like almost dislocated the uh, uh, a man's shoulder He's mm -hmm. like, oh my god! I thought you were gonna break. I'm like, my intention is to break your arm when I when I slam you into the ground. But mm -hmm. if you're trained, you're not gonna let me do that. If you're not mm -hmm. trained and you don't like, you're not conditioned to it. It's like a Muay Thai kick. If you've never taken a kick, yeah, if you've never taken a right a kick, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're gonna go down. But, but if you're conditioned to it, then it's a different story. Yeah, no, that's a good analogy, right? If you don't, yeah, if you don't have absorbed that kick, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same stuff yeah. with the knife. Like if 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 you don't know how to cut, how to stab, you're not just gonna magically pull out a knife and and cut and stab someone. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, yeah, man. So we, so when you guys got together and started doing this, how'd you guys come up with the name Boss? He came up with it. I remember uh, I remember saying it like he messaged me because uh, I was like, how are we gonna name this? Uh, because we we took uh, a big inspiration in Boss that. Uh, Literally, like three months ago, we started experimenting of uh, making like adding stripping because I've done a lot of stripping in grappling against the weapon. And he was like, uh, I want to make this European because a lot of the moves we did, this, this, this boss is not Filipino based. It's not yeah, Fili right, Filipino. Yeah, definitely, it's, it's definitely not. Yeah. Grappling. And, and, and he would, uh, because Slavin was a historian, a lot of people don't know, he published a book on Croatia is one of the famous Croatian, like a proper book, like a proper, proper book about oh, no the oh, Yeah, no. he was a big, big historian, but big, people thought because he was a former MMA fighter that, you know, uh, oh, this man's dumb, but he was like a proper historian. Like he translated texts from Latin and like I have oh, his book. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so his approach to everything was like that. Like he would like, and he was like getting ready to write another book when, when, uh, when he passed away and uh, like he would visit sites and stuff like that. And he was the same thing with, with, with us. Like we would do something and then he would like spend hours like researching old uh, historical European martial art manuals. And he said like, listen, we're on a good track. And I'll be like, how you know? They're like, look at this, this is a Kimura. They're doing the same thing, only it's a picture and you, you can't, you have to fill in the details. 
how you fill in the details is he's a black belt. So he's done this multiple times. His brain knows how to interpret certain yeah. things. Like that, that's what I, uh, I have. A, I'm, I'm just going to jump a little bit from the, from the topic, but <laughs> I have a huge, huge problem with uh, when people show locking and shit like that in HEMA. Like they call it Ringen, which is like some sort of like uh, European uh, old school wrestling. If you, mm. if you, if you, if you never wrestle, if you don't have a background in judo, wrestling, freestyle, Greco Roman, doesn't matter. It's super hard to understand what those pictures mean. But if you spend 10 years wrestling, you'll be like, oh, that's an underhook. Yeah. It's basic, yeah, because you've done that. You've done that with life. You know how to. Yeah, you've seen the reference points. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You get, exactly. You have reference points. And and he was like, uh, he was he had so much reference points. So he would see that and he would send me pictures like, oh, look, Mayer does this with his hands. This is like an Americana. But uh, look, this is an arm drag. I'm like, how can you tell? He says, like, you see how his chest is turning. Yeah. You, we can, like, we can assume and be like, okay, 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 let's, let's test this. And he says, like, this is why we didn't do stripping because in European martial arts, there's no stripping. You basically grab the blade, which again is not good. I'm not saying it, it's the correct way. Yeah, I'm and, yeah. Yeah. Right. But you don't look. You don't look for that as your first, you know, move. But yeah. I tell you, that was interesting about that. I, he's totally right. Have you ever seen? I forgot who shared this with me. There's some ancient pictures. I mean, not pictures, drawings. I should say carvings in the pyramids, and it shows freaking grappling. Yeah. I mean, it's like there's no mistake about it. I mean, it's showing. You know what I mean? It's like shit that works works across time. Like this yeah. is why. Like, uh, not just Egypt. So, yes, there's uh, Egypt, like you see uh, uh, throws. Uh, then you see on Greek vases, you see kimuras. So, uh, a guy uh, either lost his weapon or something, and he was kimuring, uh, kimuraing a soldier. Like, or uh, I don't know what you, uh, for the Americans, that uh, it's a double wrist lock for the catch a sketch can guy. So, a double wrist lock, and he was doing it. You see a soldier heel hooking, heel hooking a centaur. So this is like before Christ. So the stuff that worked, and you see double legs, you see single legs, you see yeah. single legs, you see head and arm throws, like all of the shit that's when people say, ah, oh, that's sport fighting. No, that, that's no, fighting. No, this it's was like, done hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. 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 And, and that was the references, like we would talk, and he said, like, we have such a, uh, such a big, uh, big, 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 big uh, uh, warrior culture in Europe. But it's because Europeans were generally pragmatic. We were not like the Japanese. The Japanese mm. had the longs for, for 10, like the katana, uh, for mm. 10 centuries because they didn't evolve. Yeah. Europe is the moment firearms came, we dropped the sword. Oh my gosh, that was that was a game changer. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, before that, the moment uh, full armor was cool until the bullet was invented. And yeah, then. And and he was like always like why don't we have records of like because Europe was the most fought battlefield for 10, 10 centuries mm. and for ten centuries we basically for more than ten centuries since the first migration since the Vikings we 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 killed each other but there's no, all the all the wars yeah yeah but there's no like written uh, like um. properly written like martial arts you see these heap manuals but they were written by private dudes that were into martial arts or into dueling but as far as warfare there's very little and that's because we didn't care about tradition we were pragmatic the moment i could stab you with the spear fuck the sword the moment yeah. i could shoot you with the bow fuck yeah. the spear. so it was it was that approach is it was like Yes, we need to. And also, the three main martial arts which dominate the world today uh, is European martial arts, are fencing, wrestling, and boxing. Yeah. And then to this day, they are the, the, okay. Yeah. The, like change them, but it's like yeah. Wow! 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 That's good. Good stuff. So, um, far as bass is concerned, what do you guys stress far as principle? Would you and Guru Slavin come up that you wanted to stress? far as principles to your audience? Uh, control over, uh, uh, basically position and control over any type of other thing, mm -hmm. or any type of other secondary action. So Slavin was very adamant about that. And I agree, like we would watch some of these videos, especially by those, uh, you know, color guys. And uh, once you grab two one one 
if you decide to do the bullshit like you uppercut or uh, you're gonna lose that control you're gonna lose the control no, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like that is gonna brother like just test it out just yeah, yeah. assuming they're resisting you i mean yeah, yeah. yeah. like because when a, a normal person when their arms are stretched their natural reaction is they want it back they want they want to pull it back ain't right they want their appendage back they don't yeah, yeah. want it Yes, and uh, once someone is pulling with their life, mm -hmm. when someone is trying to literally pull that hand with their life, you're going to risk that so that you can uppercut them to the face. I know. If I punch know. You, there's a, what, what, like I would never sacrifice positional dominance uh, just so that so just so that I can hit you. That to me that's crazy because I've hit people and they didn't go down. No, I know. And a lot of times you're not really in the, the best leverage position to really get leverage on your hit. You're just doing it because you were told to, or it seems like the thing to do. But like yeah. you said, you're getting up position. Yeah. It's not yeah. like you're really going to have oomph on it, you know? Yeah. 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 And uh, so you're relinquishing pressure and position, something which you fought for. So yeah, it's you not like to get. <laughs> to me, that's, to me, that, to me, that's like, uh it's it's crazy like I, i've worked so much with this position mm. and I'm, at a, I'm already at a disadvantage i'm losing because i didn't get my weapon into play and uh uh now i'm gonna sacrifice that so that i can strike no no that's not gonna happen like if we're empty-handed two on one it's not that important you know mm. you can control like uh uh, uh I think Craig Douglas has put it best. Like when you control a man, you can control a man by his uh, wrist, by the crook of the elbow where it meets the mm -hmm. bicep, and by basically underhooks or overhooks. And oh, the mm -hmm. fourth type of control is uh, the collar tie. When we talk about weapon-based grappling, the head is not important. Mm -hmm. The head is not important. I'm not going to hit, pull, or anything because I'm going to start losing control over this, which is killing me. No, one hundred percent. No argument here. Yeah, yeah. I I think that, that was a great analogy because he said, like in general grappling, you control a person by from here to here, all the way up to the collar. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, yeah. And then if you can snap someone down, you can get him into the guillotine front headlock, snap him down. Those are all valuable positions in empty-handed fighting. They're legit. Right. Has a knot. The head doesn't play a role anymore. It's you know what I think it is. I don't. Here's the thing. I like. I see what you guys do. Me, Dean Lawler in Australia. I like what he does. I don't think a lot of people. And I'm just just knowing uh, and the, after my discussion, the group, just seeing the community, really test, like really with full resistance. I, I I just I don't think. I think there's only a small percentage that do what we do. And yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. That's like. A, you know. I mean, yeah. Because uh, you have to say to yourself, like, yeah, the shit that I did that didn't work. Uh, yeah, I spent two years <laughs> learning that no, shit. You gotta be willing to freaking chuck it. Yeah, so. little, yeah, like uh, I spent a lot of time doing this, and it ended up being useless. And <laughs> it's like uh, a lot of people can't swallow that pill because uh, it's just like you invested so much time. And uh, it's that whole thing is like the best thing when you, your uh, your business isn't uh, working how it's supposed to. Like if you're mm -hmm. you, if you're at a loss, sometimes the best way is to terminate, close yeah. it, and, start. and and a lot of people like it sounds logical, but a lot of people they 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 always think no, nah, no, nah, I can make this work. I can push through this. I can. You know, I can make this in a real life. I, I would go berserk. I would be. Yeah. You know. And it's, but that's where the truth, that's where the truth and integrity comes in. And I, this is something I noticed with the community. I actually think, to piggyback off what you're saying, they start to say like, no, you know, I would make this, I would, you know, I would just lose my mind and make, but then they, that's where the lying, I hate to use this word, I'm going to say mistruth, I'll say mistruth, starts on themselves. And then it gets into an integrity issue when they start pushing on their students. Of course, you know? of course. The, the I'm going to say this and everyone's going to be shocked, but if you train Filipino for self-defense, Filipino martial arts, uh, pick something else to train for self-defense. 
with it, particularly at the end, it's nice. I, I know. I yeah. No, I, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm not saying this because like, oh, it's unrealistic game. It's not meant for uh, self defense. So mm -hmm. tr trust me. For the most part, us that are live in a Western Hemisphere, uh, mm -hmm. where let's say like not prime happens, but it's like not so so. Uh, like it's not like Latin America or South Africa or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, learn Cape Town. Like, learn to fight with your empty hands. The weapons, mm -hmm. they're cool. If you want to learn FMA for dueling, like that's that's cool. Or tradition, like this mm -hmm. is what I like. I love the sword. For me, the sword. Yeah, is the the I, to me too. The history, the, the, the history, whole thing. Everything. Learn that shit. Learn that shit. But if you if you're a if you're a white person that lives in the northern part of of the hemisphere. If you're into uh, self-defense, if you want to learn how to protect yourself, if you feel weak, mm. pick, pick something else than FMA. I, and I'm not going to, people are going to go, well, what about dirty boxing? What about the, mm. trust me, uh, some wrestling, some jujitsu and boxing will, will, will. Those two there, man, good solid wrestling and good boxing, man. Those two right there, man, can get you yeah. a lot of jams. And the conditioning will just benefit you. Because uh, you will never see a fat wrestler. Yeah, I've never seen one. <laughs> yes, yeah. Like I've, 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 I've seen, uh, I've I've been on a Ken Shamrock spree. Like I, I don't know what is it. I've the old old school lines, then guys, and and um, they showed a uh, inside it. He said like how Dan Gable inspired him, and they showed a picture of, of Dan Gable, who's like a wrestling legend. And this man is like he had two hip surgeries. He's shooting singles at six in the morning on a dummy with two fake hips. And and operated knees. I'm like this man is that that's their wrestling that's Like it, it's just a and that box and especially good boxing. Uh, like for me and and also getting punched and getting thrown will condition you to the uh the, the, fall recover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. adrenaline dump. Like all this shit, you go first. The combative mindset. Ah, ah. all that shit works until you get punched in the face or until you punch someone and they don't go down. And you're looking and, at him like, oh my god! Yeah, he didn't, yeah, he didn't yeah. Then you're looking, what now? What now? <laughs> but if you're convincing yourself to fucking getting punched and beaten and thrown and and something, it's gonna be your normal instincts of fighting will kick in, and that's mm -hmm. what I want. But again, like as far as FMA, as far as uh, knife, like offensive knife, great art. As far as stick, great art. But when are you gonna, you know, pick up a stick? Mm -hmm. it's, no, it's generally, just, no, generally. No, I agree. I, yeah, the offensive knife. Um, yeah, I mean, no argument. Sophisticated. It's probably you know the best doings. Yeah, but I've said this, and I've gotten I've gotten flack for it, of course, in the community. But defensively, the empty hand against knife from a pure defensive lens, empty hand with no missing context. I'm sorry, I I, I don't think it's the best. You know? Yeah, and also is like as far as knife when uh, that like in boss me and Slavin like. Uh, it wasn't like written, but uh, I was the 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 guy that uh, inside us. I was thinking how to get the weapon. Slavin mm -hmm. was like how to throw, how to how to you know continue because we started continuing the fight on the ground, and yeah. before he passed away. And I was always the guy like how to get my weapon into play. And and like three years uh, before this, uh, uh, like I came to a, you know when the light bulb clicks, I'm like mm -hmm. most of the good guys will start fighting empty hand. Like you cannot, you cannot tell me. Like I, I, I heard I, a lot of, uh, I ruffle a lot of feathers when I say this shit. But like, m we magically don't start with a knife in our hand. It doesn't happen. Like, no. it, it just doesn't happen. So your quick draw, uh, your transition from uh, empty hands to your knife is one of the most important skills. Like yeah. in the, it, this what is you do really well that you came up, which I found really neat in your system. And this is something I don't do because I, I. I was I was going from the premise my what I design or what I do from like okay I don't I don't have an equalizer I got family members I gotta protect them man I I, I have to deal with this I, yeah you know, unfortunately but I do like what you do where you have that where you can draw like you get yeah. the Russian tie and you can yeah. access that so I like how you guys address that and that because approach. that's like uh, for me the um, like when you when you uh, when you, uh, when I watched a lot of judo because my 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 daughter and my son both practice judo, and uh, uh, when you see like Brazilian jiu-jitsu is known for its submission, 
mm. and, um, and and judo guys are known for throwing people. Mm. But what, what, what judo has that specifically, I'll say judo and sambo, uh, but it, you know, everyone knows about judo, sambo is like a little fringe, uh, is the transitionary period between as the person is falling into a submission. No one does it better than judokas. Judokas will throw you and arm bar you like this. Like oh, all those two blended. I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know what in the Japanese term is, but the transition between uh, tachiwaza or, or standing techniques and ewaza, mm -hmm. the, the judo guys are best at it. Jiu Jitsu mm -hmm. guys, you will not see them. Maybe you'll see them jump like for an armbar, but the transition mm -hmm. between takedown and a submission is most developed in judo. And mm -hmm. when you bring that to your self defense, that will be your empty handed striking or grappling or whatever into your weapon. And like that is super important because you can be the best guy on the range <coughs> when you're like in your shooter stand. Uh. Um, you're zeroed in, you're in that fucking stance that no one stands in fighting like the horse stands, and you're firing at a paper target. But like violence happens at a very close distance. Same shit with knife. Yeah. Like you, you will probably already be slashed or stabbed as you're drawing your knife. So that's like the, the transition between that is super, super important. And, and, no, and that's the, yeah, and that's the thing that people don't practice a lot. Like they, they, they don't put the gun guys under pressure. Like yes. drawing under pressure, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, like you said, they're at the target practice. I mean, they're fantastic, but I don't think a lot of them, you know, from try, my age, there's no yeah, not just that. Like try to try to it's the same shit. Uh, put a knife on you, especially a folder knife. This is why I laugh when people say like I carry a folder for, for, for self defense. Okay, good job, buddy. So I'll throw you on the ground and I'll mount you, meaning I will sit on your hip line. Now when try to access it. Yeah, 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 try to access it. I'll just slightly slap you on your face and you try. Yeah. Now explain to me how a woman of 50 kg, which is like what? Uh, 100. Oh, don't you, don't you get me started on women's self defense, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to explain to me how the hell, because in FMA they always say like the knife is the great equalizer for women. And I completely agree. My wife carries yeah, enough. If they can get access to it. Yeah. <laughs> but how will you get access to it if we, if we assume that 90% even more of attacks will end up with, with will start with you being empty handed. Like, yeah. you, like all that shit, oh, situation of awareness, it works. It works if you're on. But let's say you're not on. You're with your family. You're not thinking of checking the corner. Yeah, everything. Like, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I always think we as the good guys, we're always a step behind. This is why we need to train. Uh, in a way that we punish ourselves so that when that step behind happens, it's normal for us. We've yeah. been there. We've been crushed. We've been smashed. Yeah. This is just another day. And and uh, yeah, people people don't want to people don't want to train like that. They don't want to fail. The problem with just you know, really, yeah, for failures, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I love failures. Like uh, before uh, before like in boss when we would grapple, bro. I, I I had so many entanglements. I would go to draw my knife because you want to be fast because I need to get my and I, I just uh, I grab over my shirt and this happens and now you have to oh, entangle. I know and you're like, you like to do that. To, yeah, and, and and you're thinking like that. It has to be like this is so important. Why am I fucking this? And and people like I'm just gonna draw the knife. You're not just gonna draw the knife. What if you're in winter clothing? So there's all of these factors we just people that like, throw to the side and you're like, nah, I'm a moral warrior and I'm holding a blade in my arm. Buddy, it's in self-defense. Like if you yeah. cannot access that blade, it's it's useless. It's yes, and for women, that's such a big thing. Like I tell a man, like you better be able to access, know where it is and be able to access it, not the bottom of your pocketbook. You know, man, it's just yeah, yeah. like uh, there will be, uh, especially for women. There's gonna be, there's gonna be uh, double socks, double, double, d double the, the 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 weight. So now imagine someone crushing your lungs just by sitting on you, and you're gonna see, you're just gonna explode and do. Sh if oh. you've never done it, good luck. No, it's good. Yeah, I know it's gonna be tough, man. Yeah, women's side is it's it's. I mean, I've had this on the show before. It, it's it's weaponized, and like you said, assuming they can get access to it and they train that. Um, yeah. So let's talk about, so we got the summer coming up. So folks that are watching, um, yeah. 
so here it is um this sunday which i'm gonna be blasting this again probably tonight saturday and all that and you're basically um you're going to be showing obviously some of the things you you were speaking on yeah um, yeah 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 uh, i'm just gonna quickly uh, i'll just quickly add so i'll try to blast past uh a lot of stuff from the bass system uh show you like drills that you can do with yourself the, the, what you can do with the partner that are uh, uh, that are an evolution to what we started. So how to incorporate stripping, which is very popular in FMA, uh, into the bus. And I will try to show you um, some transitionary takedowns off of. When I say two on one, I don't mean the Russian tie. Obviously, it it means, but I generally mean two on one control. So whenever you have two arms on opponent's limb because uh, we started developing takedowns from different positions and uh, i will try to show you uh when you get to the ground uh how to you know increase your chances of surviving how to continue the disarm on the ground and i will try to show weapon drawing from uh, horrible positions so when you need to draw your weapon when someone's in your guard when someone's on top of you because uh, that's like my, I'm mainly known for 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 like weapon draws and and the dueling shit. But like mm -hmm. for self defense, I think it's best to to focus because anyone can do this and stab someone. And uh, so I don't think we need to uh, you know learn how to cut or stab. And the the weapon draw part is like I think it's going to be great. And I'm going to be accompanied. I managed to get since my student is uh, working on the island. I managed to get my jujitsu coach. So I'm going to be working against, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be working against uh, a giant of a man and showing you that uh, this shit works against strange people. It's not just fantasy. Yeah. So, folks, if you're watching this and if you, you know, if you can jump in, it's all the monies are going to yes. Lovin's family. So this is just a great, a great cause. Yes. If you can't make it, you want to give, you know, um, if you need to get a hold of the PayPal address, where to send this to, yeah. uh, PM Marco here. He'll give you all the information you need uh, for yes. the PayPal address. It's on Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern time, which will be uh, five. Wait, four o'clock for you, correct? Four o'clock. We said five o'clock. <laughs> we wrote five o'clock, which is uh, four, three, two, one. So for it, it, we're five hours of distance now. Now you got me confused because I no, thought no, it was no. right now. It's three. It's um. It's three thirteen. So what time you got there? Yeah, me, for me it's nine thirteen. So it's six hours. So six hours. So okay. Seven. So it's six hours. Yeah, right. you're right. You're right. It will be five. It'll be five. five so yeah. eleven to one Eastern time. Five yeah. to seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's always the conversion. The time. conversion. Yeah. yeah. Um, also. Uh, just to point out all the money, all the people that already donated, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hu like hugely thankful for you. Uh, Slaven uh, has a beautiful family. He has a small daughter, Yelena, and uh, 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 a little older son, Petar. And uh, uh, all the money goes to them. Uh, me and Dean have uh, no financial benefit from this. So I would already, yeah. I would like to thank Dean for for it because with this thing is i'm just going to touch upon this i'm not going to go into deep like i would really like to thank dean because Dean never met slavin apart from like online uh and seeing one of the seminars before and he uh, immediately jumped on this opportunity to help which is like i'm forever uh, thankful and in debt uh a lot of the guys that are that, that already donated and paid like never met slavin like these are people that uh, only knew him through his online or through the bar system or through like um, fma stuff uh and uh yeah I'm, I'm super grateful to see people that are like you know respecting his body of work and 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 the uh, and the stuff he put in put out uh yeah so i'm i'm, I'm forever grateful for this and yeah oh yeah and i'm happy to do it um it's a worthy cause you know i'm a little disappointed that some people that were close to goose law yeah. and are not yeah. Stuff again, but maybe after this, they will. Yeah. 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 Um, of course, like, uh, uh, it's, it's the, this, I think it's like, even if you, if, if you can't make this, the, the time for the seminar, if it's like too early or too late, depending on the, on the time zones, 
uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be able to, uh, because it's gonna be storing on the cloud, record everything. So even if you donate and you miss the seminar, I'll send you, like I'll host it. Yeah. Is, uh, what's his name? Uh, Harry, Harry Flexman, my dad, you get him yeah. on the, uh, yeah. He, uh, he volunteered to uh, host, uh, to post it on his uh, internal storage, like on his webpage, so that anyone can access it. So it's oh, like, nice. okay, <laughs> yeah. And uh, oh, I'm sorry, I, I interrupted you, Dean. Uh, Dean's also going to be uh, show. You, 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 what do you, what do you, what are you going to show? So yeah, I think I, um, I'm going to show a couple things on the ground. Pre uh, emphasis on pre draw, and if it's out, which is an absolute nightmare. Yeah. Um, and then maybe reverse and maybe just some dueling tactics. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, sure. You know, um, I thought that would be, but uh, yeah, I think it'd be a nice combo because I know you, you do a lot of stuff with accessing and uh, which I think yeah. is pretty neat. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, if there's any requests out there, whatever, but that, that was pretty much the approach I was going to, I was going to do. Yeah. 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 Sure. Um, uh, that's great. I can't wait to. I especially I can't wait to see the dueling part because I know you're a student of uh, Obama. So I'll, <laughs> well, I'll, who, uh, who's that? Uh, I know you trained right in uh, Amok. Um, how do you spell it? Amok. Oh, Amok. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. It's more that David David Gold. Um, yeah. 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 I want to. I. I. Because I, I, I saw uh, the empty-handed stuff. I saw, I've seen, obviously, I saw your stick stuff, which is like very, uh, uh, it's uh, Calis Illustrissima, but I, I never saw the dueling knife part yeah. of the. Yeah. So, <laughs> Eric, so Eric, Eric's seen some of the dueling. Let's see if he's still here. Eric O'Brien was uh, jumping in here. Um, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, it's a lot of it's precision. A lot of it is very KI related as far as maximize an opportunity just being out of the way but yet able to access that jumping way back now you have no opportunity you know what i mean so um there's be stuff yeah. like that um uh, so but um uh, what um so what you know just closing you know as far as uh what do you like to see as far as the community and google Slava's legacy you know what would you like to see Obviously, his legacy will be continued through his school. So his school, his black belts, he has he has two black belts, but the, the, the main one, Doma Gorsoldo, the, 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 uh, I hate saying the word kid because he's younger than me, but uh, that man's a monster. As far as grappling is like, his jiu-jitsu is awesome. He's, uh, he's uh, generally like, uh, he's he was the right-hand man of Slavin. Like, I, I've I've knew Slavin more through weapons and then through some empty-handed fighting later on. But Domagoy like, was uh, from him from when he was 14 years old. So uh, all of the Muay Thai stuff, the MMA stuff, the the the, the grappling, the jiu-jitsu, mm -hmm. the wrestling, uh, the, his legacy will continue on through his club because they, they make beasts. They make champions and they'll continue to make champions, I'm sure. Of. Uh, what, what my goal is, is to... Uh, continue evolving and spreading the, but never moving from the core principles of, of, mm -hmm. of us, which will always be positional do dominance and, and pressure. And, and, and just like, uh, because that was his body of work. Like Slavin is, uh, was a great FMA or don't get me wrong, but it was oh, yeah. some, some, uh, someone others FMA, but this, this was his, uh, you know, this was, this was his, this was his, his, little tips and tricks that was he came mm -hmm. up with, with with you know uh i don't know how to say it like you know when you you can be a great stick fighter but you're basically you know using someone else's system to fight because you learned it from another person but this yeah, yeah. was built, built from built from scratch i would say yeah, from no, definitely he it's stuff that he kind of created and came yeah. up with I mean, yeah, yeah. nothing is new under the sun is like he would post this like there is nothing and he would post all pictures he would post like pictures of a renaissance man in the 14th century uh you know doing an arm drag with a yeah. knife, yeah. knife. And it's like, like this is nothing new we're just reinventing the wheel but as far as like reinventing no one uh has uh, done control 
I, this is just my opinion again. Maybe some people in Australia or, uh, or whatever in Japan have been doing the same shit as, as we did and we just didn't know it. But as far as uh, transitions, that's the key. Like um, that chain wrestling is super important. So we just, we don't grab and then we uh, ah, just hold on. No, no, no. We grab and then we transition. If the knot goes to the other hand, we lock this, we throw, we transition immediately to control. So going pa, 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 and never having that wrestling mentality of just like chain wrestling. Like this doesn't work. We go to this, we go to this, we go to this until the opponent just like flat out ends up on the ground or exhausted. And that that was his mentality. And, and the funny thing is like he said this thing and um, he said it on the last seminar we did. He said like most of the knife attacks you're going to face are going to be from weaker men. And that is true. That well, is I agree. They need it. They need that. They yeah. need that for to get what they want. No, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Like people always say, like, "Wow, that's not true." That is true. That is true. So if you make yourself strong uh, and have cardio and endurance and healthy, uh, you are to, like predators will not look at you and be like, "Ah, oh, that's a little bitch." They'll be mm -hmm. like, "Fuck, I need something to equalize." You know, because they also want to succeed. If I want to rob you, I want the highest chance of robbing. If I want to kill you, I want the highest chance, meaning I'll ambush you. You will not know I'm attacking. So, yeah, uh, yeah so because that, that's like how people, I want to win. I, the criminal also also wants to win. Yeah, they definitely want to, yeah. Right. Yeah, so, uh, so the, that's, the, that's the whole thing uh, is like, uh, we're preparing to get attacked by weak men, but we're doing it by grappling with strong men. <laughs> so, so here's the thing: <laughs> like you train, man, train with the worst, the ones that just like I tell somebody, man, like train with the train with the ones that know what you're gonna do, and they're gonna make it so difficult. So when the chumps come around, yes, <laughs> you, you, know? you you even said it. Like uh, I, I saw videos of you, like when you said like. Uh, uh, when you go for two on one, he said, "I like you said like I do I do this with dudes that were NCAA champs that did wrestling. So mm -hmm. when you develop strength of holding someone for their life, when you grab someone that's not trained, you'll rip a dirty crackhead. You're just gonna be like, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and people like oh don't uh, don't think of it like that. But th that is true. Like if you ever fought someone that's not trained, uh, it's like." Uh, I, I'm saying like if there's no weapons involved, it's like fighting a baby. It's like not, not, not literally, but like you're feeling like oh, this is so relaxed. I don't feel the pressure but when I'm going against people that are trained, that, that I know that what can they, you know, they can choke me, they can knock me out here. Like uh, most people don't know how to punch. Most people don't know how to grapple. So, so it's not something. So the only dangerous thing is uh, a gun or a knife. And right, yeah. they're, right. They're gonna have to bring it to the table, and yeah, yes. I, I totally agree. And, and their chances are, their cardio is probably not gonna be the most efficient. <laughs> Drinker, smoker, crackhead. It's usually yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. But somehow we always ignore these. Um, we always ignore these things, like ah, uh, oh, that's not like. But for example, most male fights that will happen. For example, like I'm in, I'm 36 now. Uh, when I reach 40s, let's say when I start getting into 50s, yes, 36. Oh I, can't, I can't believe I'm, I, I yeah. didn't know I was, I was 21 years older than you. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is I told you my face is I'm weight cutting, so my face. <laughs> yeah. yeah, folks are watching. Um, Marco here is getting ready, Abu Dhabi, right? Yeah, yeah, Abu Dhabi grappling championship. Yeah, yeah, to, 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 yeah, to compete in no. Hope you do well. Yeah, you know? yeah, but like the thing you said is uh, the the thing I wanted to say is like uh, in, in, when you're in your fifties, uh, most male confrontations for you will come from young strong men. Oh, it's yeah. just That's a fact. Wrong. Like it's just a fact. They'll see an older dude and think like I'm gonna take his wallet. I'm gonna road rage. It it's just a fact. You're not yeah. gonna be fighting guys that are sixty. No, it's, I'm gonna be fighting the 30 year old, the 20 year old, the 30 year olds who like 100. Yeah. Yeah, and this is why like strength and conditioning is super important. And I know a lot of like masters that climb five stairs and they can't breathe. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like like that. That is super important. Why like endless drilling is cool, but like sparring and and positional sparring and situational sparring and conditioning that that's like way more important than like learning like. Yeah, 50 counts of product. Here's the thing. I can't afford to do that stuff anymore. I need to do stuff that is that's going to get me home, man. I don't want time to be like, 
So I'm just refining what I know is going to work, yeah. you know, and yeah, it all right, that's it. Yeah. It's going to be a 20 yeah. year that's going to try to do whatever. Cause I think but they you can... also keep yourself in shape. That That's yeah, the... try to. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah you also keep it because, uh, how many times you see like, like obese dudes saying like, I'll just pull out my gun and shoot him. Good luck when you fall to the ground and you're gasping for <laughs> air. Like, yeah, good luck. Good luck. Good luck with that. Like, uh, I love how some people like think like, ah, just pull out my sword and I'll just cut him. No. Like, and this is why, like, it irks me when I see fat guys on some martial arts page saying like, when I draw my fruit knife, I'll cut him up good. Like, bro, you're, you're 300 pounds. Like, take care of yourself. What kind of message are you sending out to people when you're a fat fuck and you're telling about the first self-defense is like most of us will not get in, into a violent altercation. So your health is super important. Keep that shit. Like, like you'll die of a heart attack you before you fucking attack. Yeah. So it's like, uh, yeah, but I'm, yeah. <laughs> I don't no, want to right. you. Like, and here they are. They're, they're, they're the model or the, or the, you know, the cover image or the face of something. And then you look at him, you're like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's uh but here anyway, so all right so folks yes if you sunday 11 a.m to 1 eastern time 5 to 7 if you're in the area of europe because london's an hour before you guys yeah 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 because of the yeah the the zero meridian it, it like yeah. england yeah right to the to the lake. so they're uh they're an hour early yeah okay right 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 and um and so folks if you need directions as far as payment directions um uh, just pm marco yeah. and he'll give you the paypal instructions i you got that it, it was posted somewhere in your initial post i, I believe as well it is, right it is, yeah uh, you, you can see it in the post and in, even in the double post but just pm me on my uh, private facebook because facebook is weird when we like the ronin page like i get messages that are day old so like just pm me on my private uh, uh, private Facebook, I'll, I'll, I'll answer everyone, so there's never a problem. And uh, yeah, so even if uh, you're not going to be able to make it, uh, like you'll just get the download, pay any, you'll get the download. Yeah, you'll get you even yeah, you you'll get the download. So don't even worry about that. This is more of like doing a good cause than like promoting ourselves or teaching. Like mm -hmm. I and I, you know, yeah, awesome. wonderful. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you coming on, speaking on his behalf. I'm looking forward to Sunday, and yeah. um, let's do it. And uh, I'm going to definitely be blasting this a couple, you know, definitely before we get there. And I'll put in also that um, if they can't make it, you know, the, a download will be available. So nice, 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 nice. nice. Thanks, Dean. Thanks, Dean. Yeah, like, yeah, no. yeah this, you're a great example of like help coming from a totally uh, uh, unexpected. Uh, corner. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I'm happy to do this. Is what FMA discussion is about. You know what I mean? Helping, bringing. You know what I mean? This is what we're about. So I'm, I'm happy to. I honored that you make me inclusive. So, uh, yeah. but uh, all right. So then Sunday it is, and and uh, so I'll, I'll wait till you. You're gonna send me the link. I'll just wait. Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll make a, uh, all the all the guys that are gonna be in a Zoom. Um, tomorrow I'm gonna make a group. So. Okay. Uh, and I'll add you all because most of them I have them as Facebook friends, uh, so I'll add them to the group, and then I'll just send a joint uh, uh, link for the Zoom call, and they'll just kick it. We can go like one. We'll just we'll just flow. This doesn't need to be like traditional. Like uh, like we'll just flow. We'll uh, you show something or uh, you can go first, then I'll go. Whatever the yeah. yeah. No, sounds good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But all right, well, I look forward to it, and uh, we'll see you Sunday. Yeah. Bye, Dean. All right, you take care. You too. <laughs> all, right. all right, folks, yeah, so that's just Sunday. Yeah, again, if you can't make it, just you can get the download. You know what I mean? So, it, and so again, going for a good cause, his family, two kids, you know, so sad, sad. All right. I uh, will hopefully I'll see you um, Sunday. And who is next as far as coming on? Uh, next week would be at least three. Uh, Dan Loman, uh, Max, another uh, Irish Tech fighting system, and Frank Dello. Uh, 
up in Blue Canada. Came out a book, and I forget the system. Uh, hold on, I may have it. Uh, yes. So we're covering this. So we just came out of the book, and the system is the five angles. So it'll be on next week. But uh, anyway, all right, folks, thank you for jumping in, and I'll see you next time.